Welcome back everybody. I realize I haven't cooked any wild game roast in a long time and I have a hankering for one of those Arby's types of sandwiches. So I pulled a pronghorn roast out of the freezer. It's thawed. Let's get to it. I also realized I should probably be bringing out some of my old knives for you to check out. I bought this stainless blank on eBay about 12 years ago. I made the handle and the bolsters on this one. Even made the sheath out of an old piece of rawhide, stained it and finished it. Griddling's what I do, but I want to start to bring back some of the rustic stuff that my channel was founded on. So a couple of thawed Colorado pronghorn roasts. I'm using the Scott's Food Products Monterey Mesquite Seasoning. Over the years, I've used everything from salt, pepper, and garlic to the high mountain seasonings, hickory and mesquite seasonings on these. I don't get too technical when it comes to smoking meats. I'm not into competition <laughs> meat smoking. I just like food that tastes good. If you are hoping for a competition barbecue channel here or a guy with a list of smoking and championship accomplishments, you might want to skip on to another channel. Everybody knows that I work for Blackstone and I show off Blackstone griddles for a living, so I don't promote any smokers. I've got a couple around the house here that I use to smoke my wild game. This is a Cook Shack Smoke at Elite. Cook Shack sent this to me about 10 or 11 years ago. And I have an older Brinkman electric smoker that my wife bought me when we got married. They both work well. People arguing about smokers keep me out of it. I think we'll go with mesquite today. It only makes sense. I only need one chunk, so we'll find a piece that looks good. One piece of mesquite. And I'll actually use a meat probe today. Nothing fancy, just the one that came with the smoker. It's been a while, but I think I did about 225, 235 last time. And that's about it. I'll keep checking the temperature over the next couple hours. Probably gonna shoot for around 150 degrees or so. I definitely wanna get into showing you guys more wild game cooking options. I still get lots of comments from people that essentially say, hey Todd, if I could cook wild game like you, then I would do it, but I usually end up not using it. Or I have a freezer filled with wild game. I don't know what to do with it. It's meat, okay? It is meat, it's meat. Guess what, it's meat, okay? So less fat than domestic wild game. But if you take care of it properly in the field, you get it skinned, you get it chilled, you keep it on ice, you trim it, you get all the junk off there, right? And if you do the necessary things to it, like if it's burger, you're adding fat to it, you're cooking it the right way, you're using the right seasonings, it should be delicious. And the average person wouldn't know that it's wild game that they're eating. So let me know down below if you're a hunter, let me know down below if you want me to get into doing more of these wild game recipes and if so come on show your support go out to toven zone t-o-v-e-n-z-o-n-e tovenzone.com and buy some apparel getting some new shirt designs up there it's been several hours i don't know three hours three and a half i'm not paying attention my internal temperature is up to 150 so let's check them out Let's pull these roasts. Let's wrap these up for 10 or 20 minutes. It's been about 20 minutes out here on the patio with our old buddy, Butter Bam over here, Levi. I still get lots of messages every year, people asking for recommendations on meat processing equipment. I've gotta give a thumbs up for Weston, baby. They hooked me up with everything I need years ago. I've been using it for years. Same Weston slicer that I've been using for probably seven or eight years. So let's crack these open and check them out. So this is smoked to 150 degrees and resting in foil for 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna use the meat slicer to do nice thin slices, but whew, got one more chance to pull out the Bowie knife just to see what it looks like inside. Let's put it on the slicer.
Now we just need to toast the buns. I picked up these Pepperidge Farm sesame seed buns. Look a little bit like vintage Arby's maybe. And mayo inside. I have the Pro Series down low, middle two burners off, and the outside burners on low. Just gonna get a quick toast on these so they're ready when we get our cheese melted. Been a minute or two, let's check it out. Toast it to perfection. I'm gonna grab my Blackstone warming rack. It's a toss up between American cheese, Cheese Whiz, or Velveeta. I only have Velveeta in the house, so Velveeta it is. I'm not gonna weigh anything, I'm just gonna portion out what I think is a good sandwich sized pile. down with that Velveeta. Again, this could be Cheese Whiz. American cheese would also work really well for this recipe. Crank the temperature back up if you need to, but I have plenty of heat here. A Little bit of water. Close the hood. And give it a minute. And we'll do some snacking while we wait. It's been a few minutes. If you are using Velveeta like I use, it takes a little bit longer to melt. Cheese Whiz obviously melts quicker. Nothing left to do but make some beef and cheddar. Or in our case today, antelope and cheddar. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Like I said, I've made these before, but this was my inspiration. I found these in the grocery store the other day. My wife isn't a big fan of the horsey sauce, but I love it. Of course, I have to have a little bit of Arby's sauce as well. Everybody else will just go with Arby's and that beautifully toasted sesame seed crown on top. Take a look at that. I told Levi we're gonna toast these, and he said, what's that? I said, that's where you touch them and then eat them, and he said, that's sus. Toasting, that's sus. Are you ready, buddy? Yeah. Let's give it a try. It's that simple to make a delicious Arby's beef and cheddar. This is pronghorn and cheddar, my goodness. You don't have to settle for lousy food. You can make the good stuff if you have the time. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully this helps you realize you can make some great stuff with your wild game and listen. Almost forget that you heard wild game because you could do this with a beef roast as well. So thanks for watching. Until next time, Todd, Levi, praise the Lord and pass the beef and cheddar. cheddar.